at Wendy's. Hi, this is Tammy, and we're so glad you called. The latest message from Jim and Tammy Baker. I think it won't be long until p the people of America will realize that Jerry Falwell, Mr. Grutman, orchestrated a hoax on America like that has never been done before. We're That's the message they're putting out, and you have to pay to hear it. Coming up next, Jim Baker, live and free. Good evening, I'm Ted Koppel, and this is Nightline. And the more I pushed Jim Baker away, the more Jim Baker held his grip. We do not feel that he is fit to lead this ministry or any ministry. After all that's happened, could Jim Baker be on the verge of a comeback? This is ABC News Nightline. Reporting from Washington, Ted Koppel. For the past week or so, I've been carrying on an amiable correspondence with one of Jerry Falwell's attorneys, Roy Grutman. Mr. Grutman wanted me to know why the Reverend Falwell would not appear on this program tonight, and why he, Grutman, under certain conditions, would. I, in turn, explained to Mr. Grutman why that proposal lacked the symmetry of a Baker-Falwell exchange, and we finally have agreed to disagree. One of Mr. Grutman's letters, however, did close on this colorful note. I cannot understand, wrote Mr. Grutman, the public's continuing fascination with a defrocked minister who is incontestably either a rapist or an adulterer, allegedly a pervert and a financially devious and false steward who abused the trust of the credulous and who may also be a criminal as well. Setting aside for a moment the accuracy of those charges and a certain disingenuousness on Mr. Grutman's part, that paragraph, in fact, sums up with devastating precision just what it is that mesmerizes so many people about Jim Baker. All of that and the possibility, just the possibility, mind you, that Baker may be hitting the comeback trail. To bring us up to date, here's Nightline correspondent James Walker. When we last checked in with the Bakers, we heard Jim say about his affair with Jessica. I admitted that I've had a 15 to 20 minute relationship with Jessica Hahn. We listened to Jim talk about allegations he was a homosexual. There's no substance to these charges. About his 1986 PTL salary. I would say roughly my salary was 1.1 million. We watched Tammy cry and listened to her defend her shopping spree. I shop outlet stores an awful lot and I enjoy shopping. It's kind of a hobby to help my nerves. And we heard Jim wonder what had gone wrong. Dear God, how could we have our ministry stolen from us? How could it happen? How could it be? Indeed, how could it be? Defrocked by the Assemblies of God, cut off from his evangelical power base and his million dollar salary, Jim Baker last May was all but declared dead. I would be doing a disservice to God and to the church at large to allow you to come back here now or ever. The 10 members of the board of directors of PTL cannot sit on a board that could have the slightest uh, potential for the return of Jim Baker to continue the PTL travesty of the past. How could Jim Baker even appear to be resurrected? His lifestyle of the rich and famous made titillating front page news. His PTL is in bankruptcy. He and Tammy are possible targets of a federal grand jury probe into criminal tax fraud, mail and wire fraud. He's also apparently under investigation in connection with the payment of hush money, $265,000 of PTL money to Jessica Hahn. But Jessica hasn't remained still. She told all to Playboy, claiming she had been deceived and deflowered by Baker. He picked me up by my waist, you know, lifted me out of my chair, and um, just, I had a, this wrap-around dress, and he untied it. I'm pushing away, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to hold on to my dress, I'm pushing away. He takes me by my waist and just, you know, puts me on this bed. I mean, the man standing there with absolutely nothing on, staring down at me. He takes off the bra, my bra, and he, he just puts himself on top of me. At this point, I began to cry. And I said, 
I don't understand what you're doing. And he said, Jessica, remember, when you help the shepherd, you're helping the sheep. Han also posed topless for a 10-page photo spread and reportedly was paid $1 million. I just want our partners to know we have repented and we need their emotional and financial support now more than ever. It's true. I don't know how As millions of Americans gawked and giggled over the Baker's very public travails, comedians found themselves a pleasing target. If you cross Tom Selleck with Tammy Faye Baker, what would you get? Oh, this you gotta get. Magnum P.I. eyeliner. It's victory in Jesus. But there was nothing funny about any of it for the hundreds of people who worked at PTL and the thousands of others whose generous financial gifts helped build the ministry. Contributions began to shrink. This summer, Reverend Falwell kicked off emergency fundraising campaigns complete with outrageous stunts. But it wasn't enough to pay off the $72 million PTL owed 1,400 creditors. Blaming Baker for the financial disaster, PTL officials file for bankruptcy. Their choice, either that or break up the real estate-rich $200 million evangelical empire. A court-appointed examiner, William Robinson, said that although his investigation of PTL books is incomplete, a check of the last two years indicates Baker was possibly guilty only of mismanagement. I think that the numbers show us that, that the money that came in basically is here at Heritage or has been used to support the projects that are here at Heritage Good. over the past five or six years. The embattled ministry then suffered yet another major shock. The bankruptcy court judge, while not rejecting Falwell's reorganization plan, said he would allow a group made up of PTL creditors and donors to file a competing plan. To Falwell, that was the final blow. It was, he said, a move that could put supporters of Jim Baker in control of the ministry and might even lead to Baker's return. With that, Falwell and the entire board of directors resigned. But I hope that, that integrity will, will prevail over greed and that no one will allow this ministry ever again to become what it was, probably the greatest scab and cancer on the face of Christianity in 2,000 years of church history. The Bakers saw it differently. It was, they felt, their chance to return. And Tammy and I are willing to do whatever God wants, whatever the judge and the people decide. Our family has sacrificed a lot to build Heritage USA, and uh, I want to go home. Do you think that, but the possibility that they could go home was enough to turn Christian harmony at PTL into a holy war. I would lay $10,000 down in front of Jim Baker, walk off and leave it, and I'll, I'll feel sure that it'll be right there when I come back there. How you can stand there and honestly say, after he's taken millions and thousands of people, Amen, brother. and you I, tell me they were a straight Amen. face, you can you trust them. I wouldn't here. trust them with 10 cents. Trust or not, the move is underway to return Jim Baker to the PTL, a move spearheaded by attorney Melvin Belli. I think that before too long, you'll see that uh, Jimmy will be preaching and raising money for PTL, and I think eventually that uh, he's going to be refrocked and will be a reverend. Jim Baker's place is not at PTL. Jim Baker's place is in jail. All the PTL lifetime partners uh, who have come to the Fundamentalist Anonymous Legal Task Force for help are unanimous. They don't want Jim Baker back. They want their money back. To improve their battered image, the Bakers have hired Los Angeles promoter Jeff Franklin. Franklin is directing a public relations blitz featuring this music video called The Ballad of Jim and Tammy. We want to help you, Jim and Tammy, help you save your heritage, USA. Hello, this is Tammy Faye. And this is Jim. And we're so glad you called today. To help raise money, they make daily telephone recordings, which callers pay $1.50 to hear. How much they've made is not yet known. It's a beautiful day here where we are. I hope it's nice at your house. You know, Jim, we just read a funny article in one of the, what I call the rag magazines. And I think I'm supposed to have raised a chicken from the dead, and I've never even been near a chicken. 
Next month, the Bakers are scheduled to begin a 25-city national tour, sort of a Jim and Tammy TV show on wheels. But with only three weeks to go, ticket sales have been dismal. In Kansas City, Missouri, 17,000 tickets available, about 70 tickets sold. In Memphis, 12,000 seats available, only 30 seats sold. But even pathetic numbers like these are not enough to keep Jim Baker down. And with his appearance here on Nightline, Baker once again hopes to win over his followers and the ministry that he feels should rightfully be his. I'm James Walker for Nightline. On the West Coast, former PTL minister Jim Baker is standing by to make that live appearance, and he'll join us when we return in just a moment. This is ABC News Nightline, brought to you by Ford Motor Company. Ford Motor Company's new six-year, 60,000-mile powertrain warranty has a quality all its own. For the seventh year in a row, our cars and trucks have had fewer reported problems on average than any other vehicles designed and built in North America. Not just when they were new, but thousands of miles down the road. Six years, 60,000 miles. With a warranty like that and a quality record like ours. Whose car would you rather be driving? At Ford, quality is job one. Practice. It's fundamental to success, and no one knows it better than Stanley Morgan. At Raytheon, we admire the kind of dedication it takes to catch over 500 balls a day. Because in our own way, we do the same thing in electronics, aviation, appliances, and industry services. Raytheon, where quality starts with fundamentals. Enter a world of excitement Where fantasy comes to life Where the stakes are high And secrets fly For your entertainment tonight Enter a world of excitement Enter the world of entertainment tonight Watch Entertainment Tonight weeknights at 7 on Channel 6. It's happening all over Columbus. You can see it, you can feel it. Columbus is coming alive. Downtown is blossoming, but it's our roots, our neighborhoods being reborn before our eyes, stimulated by innovative programs instituted by Council President Jerry Hammond. Low cost loans and funds for neighborhood improvements have rekindled civic pride. New jobs, new growth, new opportunities, thanks to Councilman Jerry Hammond. Jerry Hammond, leading Columbus to greatness. Making money on the stock market is becoming more like gambling in a casino. How it got that way and what Washington might do. Tomorrow, watch ABC's World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Former PTL Minister Jim Baker is with us now, live from Pacific Palisades, California, from the home of the man who's producing and promoting his upcoming national tour. A lot of people, Mr. Baker, and I must confess I'm among them, uh, have speculated that the main reason you'd want to come on this program tonight is to promote a tour that really is kind of flagging in ticket sales, as Jimmy Walker just suggested. Uh, any other reason? Uh, I was asked, and uh, I would just like to talk to the people of America. What about the tour? What's the, what's the point of that tour other than making money? Well, the, the tour was to go out and meet our partners, our friends that we didn't get a chance to really say goodbye to. And uh, I'm hearing my voice back in this in an echo, excuse me. And uh, we wanted to be able to face to face, to talk with the people that we were cut off from and spend a wonderful evening with them. And I felt like it would be a chance for us to once again reestablish that relationship with the people that we love so dearly. Why not do it for free? Well, you got to pay the bills. And uh, we felt that to take up an offering would be a mistake. That uh, at this time people would say, well, he's just back trying to raise money again through uh, offerings. And we felt that if there was a ticket price, that it would be just like a gospel concert and people would know what to expect. And uh, if they came out, that they had decided to spend that money to come. The initial reaction, uh, and it's really not all that initial anymore because the word of your tour has been out for some time, the tickets have been on sale for a few days, uh, is to put it charitably, underwhelming. You're not selling a lot of tickets. Now I gather that uh, at evangelical concerts like this, uh, the tendency is for folks to buy on the last day or the day before the last day. 
but we've also checked into that and found that in other cases, the preliminary sales, the early sales, are a lot heftier than yours. It doesn't sound as though people want to pay to come see you. Well, the, the, uh, most of the gospel concerts, I understand, the people do uh, come to buy the tickets on the day of the concert or a day before. That's what I've been told. Yeah, but as I said, in other cases, and I, I, I heard that uh, you might say precisely what you've said right now, and that's why we checked into it. Uh, mm -hmm. in, in other gospel concerts, the, the advance sales are just a lot heftier than yours mm -hmm. have been. Are you, well, get, are you getting any sense that perhaps the public is getting a little tired of this saga? Well, I hope they are, because I'm tired of it, and I think it's time that we we stop the public debate and that we get back to ministry. There's so many hurting people in this country, and I think what we need to do is begin to concentrate on what God called all of us ministers to do, and that's preach the gospel, which is the good news, and uh, begin reconciliation and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm sure stop you, the holy war, you know. I'm sure you haven't forgotten, Mr. Baker, because it must be a very big part of your life, but you're not a minister. You're an ex-minister. You've been defrocked. Uh, <laughs> Well, you're laughing. Why? Well, I, I, just, I just feel like uh, the call of God comes from God, not from man. I understand, but the Assemblies of God in this case was the governing board, and they decided that you should be defrocked, so whether or not you feel that you should go out and preach is one thing. And, and the question that has yeah. been raised by, by a lot of people, uh, and, and again, I, it's, it, it's one that I've wondered about, too. If you were a man who was genuinely sorry, and we're going to get into some of the details of what we're talking about a little bit later, but if you were a man who was genuinely sorry, there are lots of ways you could demonstrate that, not the least of which would be to go out among the poor uh, and show that you are first and foremost uh, a man of God uh, who wants to help people find God, who wants to be charitable. Instead, old Jim Baker seems to be doing what Jim Baker's always done, and that is hustling a buck. Well, uh, I'm sorry you feel that way. Uh... It's not a question of how I feel. I mean, you've got a 900 telephone number thing. People can pay a buck fifty to listen to you and Tammy talk about chickens that she either did or didn't raise from the dead. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's not, that's really not bringing people closer to God, is it? No, uh, but one of the things that we feel we must do, and that is we, we must clear our name, and uh, we want to help people. We, we have to pay our bills right now. We have tremendous amount of uh, legal bills that will be due. And uh, we thought that this, this would be a, the 900 number, would be a way to be able to uh, pay our legal bills and also be able to get our side of the story out to the public. Uh, you know, I've, I've only heard uh, a couple of those phone calls, and I, I, I hope you won't be hurt if I tell you that I didn't pay the buck 50 to, to find <laughs> out what it was you were saying. Uh, I can't really see that you're telling people an awful lot in those phone calls. I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of... Uh, the perils of Pauline as told by Jim and Tammy Baker, uh, but you're not really saying much of what you haven't said many, many times before, not the least of them on this program about five months ago. Well, I feel like uh, the story has not been told, and uh, I feel like we'd had an opportunity to be able to put some of the details in, because I meet people all the time that say, Jim and Tammy, uh, we didn't know this happened. We didn't know. You know, people keep saying, uh, we gave the ministry, for instance, to Jerry Falwell. In no way, shape, or form did I give the ministry to Jerry Falwell. Yeah, which you said in some detail on, on this broadcast back uh, when you were on a few months ago. I mean, it's not as though you haven't had ample opportunity to say that, and it's not as though uh, Americans in large numbers haven't had ample opportunity to hear you. And if all you were concerned about doing was getting the message out, uh, then again, uh, as you are doing now, you could come on programs like this, uh, and I'm sure you could get the message out with great clarity and at, and at greater length, and it wouldn't cost people well, a buck fifty a throw. Well, there's not a lot of shows like this. The, so many of the programs are argumentative and just want to cast back and forth. And, and uh, I just don't want to be involved with mud slinging and, and just consistently going on and on and on, throwing mud back and forth. I, I'm not interested in that. Yeah, well, I mean, we're not going to throw mud back and forth here today, but uh, no, I, I no, am, I but I, but I am going to ask you uh, a, a few questions, which I suspect you will find rather painful. But let's put that off while we take a break, and we'll come back with uh, Jim Baker in just a moment. Volkswagen engineers believe our 16-valve engines should not only provide an abundance of power, but be accompanied by the technology to control it.
And that's a belief from which our engineers never walk away. German engineering, the Volkswagen way. Well, if it isn't Clark Riley's ex-fiancée, uh, Lisa, right? Oh, Clark. I see you're still eating from the two major food groups, sugar and preservatives. And you're still eating Nutribrain. It's good for you. It's good for you, too. You still care? The surprising taste of Nutrigrain almond raisin with no preservatives and no sugar added. So do I get a bowl? <laughs> Is this a new Lisa? People change. Kellogg's Nutrigrain. Dedicated to the ones we love. For light rock favorites, it's Sunny 95. More music with five in a row, nine to five, Sunny. All night. All night. For favorites of the 60s, 70s, and 80s, it's always Sunny and 95. Been a test. If it has caused a real pizza emergency, you are instructed to go directly to Pizza Hut and order their famous pan pizza with your favorite toppings. Some might say we're quiet, especially against all the product noise in the banking marketplace these days. Well, Buckeye Federal can offer a full range of banking products too, including three great checking plans that will stack up against anybody's. But we won't just hustle them off the shelves like breakfast cereal. With a heritage as rich as ours, we don't need bells and whistles. Not when a little quiet will be more easily heard. On 2020 Friday, working couples, spouses excelling on their own, but finding time for each other by running their marriages like a business. On 2020 Friday. Are you looking for a new car? Tomorrow morning, see the new 88s from GM, Ford, and Chrysler. And do UFOs exist? We'll meet a scientist who listens for UFOs. Tomorrow. We're back live once again with Jim Baker. Uh, Mr. Baker, I cannot believe that you're really going to try and go back to PTL. Now, I've heard you sort of suggest it, imply it. If people want you, you'll come back. I've heard your lawyer, Melvin Belli, suggest that it's a possibility, but you can't seriously be thinking about going back, are you? If the PTL partners want us back and the creditors want us back, then Tammy and I are willing to go back. But we're not going to force our way back into PTL in any way, shape, or form. Well, I mean, you can't force your way back in. Uh, you know, the only way you could come well, back uh, would be if they're willing to let you come back. Well, I could, you know, I could go on a crusade to come back, but I'm not, I'm not doing that. Well, some people are suggesting that's exactly what you're doing. That's why you're going around the country. That's why you're making this tour, not to say goodbye to people, but in effect to get them to say hello to you again. No, no Ted, I feel like Tammy and I need to clear our name. We, a few days ago, my father hemorrhaged and was dying, and I was called to go to his side, and as the ambulance was rushing him to the hospital, I was on my way from Gatlinburg to Charlotte. And uh, I found myself praying, and I was saying, Dear God, don't let my father die in this shame. And I knew at that moment I had to do something to clear our name. And that's when I began to ask my attorneys that uh, to do anything and everything necessary in the courts or wherever to clear our name of this hideous smear campaign that's been launched against us. Well, what, what is it? Uh, I mean, you talk about the smear campaign. There, there is, to the best of my knowledge, nothing new that has really been raised in the last few months. And, and again, it was just starting to die down again. You could have stayed out of the public eye. You could continue to stay out of the public eye. And eventually, people would get bored with the subject of Jim and Tammy Baker, and the jokes would die away, uh, and the skits on television would stop. And then presumably you could go back to doing what it is you claim you want to do, and that is the ministry of God. But I really think that people deserve answers. I believe they deserve documented answers. I believe this has been a blight on all of Christianity, and I feel like uh, it ought to be erased. Yeah, well, all right. Uh, I, I, I got to tell you, I would just as soon not be doing it this way. We went, for example, to a number of people, among them uh, the Reverend John Ankerberg, and asked him to come on in the, in the piece at the top of the show so that he could make 
uh, whatever accusations or charges is he wants to make. He, he opted not to do that. Instead, he sent me a long memorandum. Uh, and I, I prefer not to do him the courtesy of reading some of his questions when he won't do us the courtesy of coming on the program tonight, but he does make a couple of good points. Um, you were officially notified, says John Ankerberg, by registered mail on April 24th and May 1st of charges made against you and officially invited by the 16 district officers of the North Carolina District, uh, district Presbytery to appear and answer those charges and to meet your accusers face to face. Now, you told me when you were on Nightline a few months ago that that's really what you wanted to do. You wanted to meet those people who were accusing you uh, of, of having made homosexual advances to them. You wanted to meet those people to meet your accusers face to face. You had that opportunity. You didn't take advantage of it. That, that raises, in my mind at least, the question of whether your offer to meet them, indeed your insistence to meet your accusers, is genuinely made. Uh, Ted, I was notified after the fact, after it was brought out, after it was smeared all over television. Tammy and I were devastated, and uh, we were hurt. We were devastated that our own uh, denomination would take such a move without bringing us in privately and on all the other ministers. And uh, we are going to be going one-to-one -to, -one to individual ministers and to our denomination and to the different people. And uh, we invite... Uh, you know, if, if people have charges against us, we think we ought to have uh, those charges brought out in a court of law, brought out where documents can be presented, where people are under oath, not mudslinging, not hearsay, but the documentable information. We're not talking. And that's why. Yeah, we're not talking here, Mr. Baker, really about about uh, you know the mudslinging that came. I would suggest to you a little bit later, we're talking here about your denomination, the ruling body of your denomination, inviting you to come and do what I gather your denomination calls for in cases like this, and that is to confront your accusers privately, not in the public eye, not with any charges being made publicly, but to give you an opportunity to meet your accusers face to face. You were given that uh, chance, and you opted no, not to take advantage no. of it. My denomination never invited me to meet my accusers. Uh, that, that never happened, I'm sorry. You're telling me that the North Carolina District Presbytery has nothing to do with your denomination? Yes, but they did not invite me to meet my accusers. They, they invited me to meet with them uh, to, to uh, begin uh, uh, hearings or whatever they were going to do. To, to discuss with well, them, but they, you know, they, again, they this is this is accusers. one of the reasons. This is one of the reasons that I'm I'm really so annoyed that John Ankerberg didn't have the courage to come on here himself. But uh, you know, to quote uh, now from from his memorandum, let me just tell you: to appear and answer those charges and meet his accusers face to face. Now, what he says is that you got you got that offer by registered mail not once but twice. We can't find the accusers. Well, I'll tell you something else. We found one of them tonight. We found one of them. We talked to him. I had one of my staff call him tonight. And this is a direct quote. I was approached by him. This is a former PTL vice president. I was approached by him. That's you. Asked to go to his bedroom for a meeting about hotels. After we discussed business, he asked me for a back rub, grabbed my hand, put it where it wasn't supposed to go, and reached for my zipper. I took over fast. Now, if, that, if, if you want to know who that is, and if you want to confront that person, after this broadcast is over, I'll be more than glad to give you not only his name, but his telephone number. Yes. Uh, that's simply not true. It's not true, and so the man is a liar, and maybe worse than that. Is that what you're saying? Well, I just say it's simply not true. Well, you know, if I were you, and, and, you know, we went over some of this ground the last time we talked, I, you know, on the one hand, you are desperately eager, you say, to confront yes. your accusers, yes. to have it out, to clear your name. Uh, you say quite understandably that, you know, your father is gravely ill and you want your, you want your name to be cleared before anything happens to him. It would seem to me that the first thing you would want to do would be to confront these people. Yes, and I'd be glad to do that and confront them in front of the Presbytery, in other words, in front of people of your own denomination, so that if, in fact, it turns out that these charges are all untrue, that they are, they are malicious, 
that you could even be reinstated? I would be more than happy to do that in due process, but my wife and I have not decided that we would uh, rejoin the denomination. We have been offered uh, to be ordained by uh, other organizations, and uh, we're considering that at this time. Well, you know, I, I have a sense I know what this answer is going to be, but if indeed other denominations, plural, I think you said, yeah. have offered you the chance to be ordained again, which denominations? Several. <laughs> Yeah, which ones? I don't want to name them on television. Why not? I mean, if well, they, I just, if, I, if, if, I just if, don't think if, it's, uh, I don't think it's proper to do that before we've even made a decision. Well, I mean, you may make the decision not to, not to be ordained by them, but here you are making a claim on national television that you've been offered a chance to be ordained again. Uh, yeah. And clearly, if you do it, you're not going to do it privately. Almost nothing yeah. you've done has been terribly private. Uh, so why not name which, which denomination? Well, I, I don't think it would be fair to them or it would be fair to us. To, why? They, to, they, offered, to, to they offered you the chance, didn't they? Yes, uh-huh, yes. But it wouldn't be fair to say which denominations? No. <laughs> I don't think it's fair to bring anybody else into this controversy. All right, we'll come back to all of this in just a moment. I'll be back with Jim Baker when we return. It's the same thing. It's, it's not. I can't drink my coffee without my sweet and low. Well, what do you want me to do about it? Sweet and low for millions of people is just no equal. Scottsdale, Arizona. Built from little more than desert sun and desert air. Where city leaders use computers to connect every department of city government. Computers from Unisys. Unisys helps Scottsdale's leaders meet growing demand so efficiently that over the last six years, property taxes have actually gone down. Unisys and government, the power of two. Give him a beam and you lift it high. Give him a dream and you make it fly. He's a man of iron. Here's to the men we can lean on. Men of iron to the men we believe in. Men Cologne, never stronger than the man who wears it. This is the new Cuisinart Basic. It's a big food processor with a small price. Basically, its price is chopped, sliced, shredded. It needs a lot of dough for a little dough. Cuisinart Basic, easy to use and buy. You've got a sore throat. Hello, would you? And a cough. <laughs> Nice showers your throat with medicine, cooling your pain and cough pleasantly. Would you like to buy a trusty little vacuum? No, thank you. So you can have a nice day. Motorcycles. There's no better way to have fun in the sun. But ever-increasing traffic congestion has made it difficult for the motorcyclist to ride safely. Even the safest bike rider can be seriously injured by a careless driver. The law firm of Walski & Blue, with over 20 years' experience in cases involving motorcycle accidents, reminds all drivers to be extra cautious during nice weather when motorcyclists are out. So please drive and bike safely and put Walski & Blue's experience to work for you. A partly cloudy and cool Wednesday. Joining us live once again from California is Jim Baker. Uh, Mr. Baker, I uh, may have left our audience with the impression that we invited uh, the Reverend John Ackerberg to come on this program live. We did not. We, uh, we offered him the opportunity to be interviewed for that setup piece, uh, and he declined that. In his memorandum to me, uh, he said, why do you think that the North Carolina District and the General Council of the Assemblies of God both found you guilty not only of your sexual encounter with Jessica Hahn, but of bisexual activity? Why would they do that? I, I discussed this with the officials of North Carolina. They, they did not find me guilty of anything. They, they have not tried me in North Carolina. Well, I mean, why, why is it that you seem tonight to be reluctant then to have, I mean, I would think rather than going oh, I'm into not a public reluctant. Court. In fact, uh, you know, uh, 
one of the things that uh, Tammy and I have discussed uh, in the last few weeks is that we desire to go to Reverend Cookman and uh, to the district and begin to open dialogue with all of them. Now that the shouting and the screaming and the mudslinging has stopped, we feel it's time to open communication and to, to begin to reestablish our friendships and, and these relationships with uh, our district and with, with the men. Now, all those who have borne witness against you say they are prepared in that forum to be confronted by you directly. Would that not be a desirable thing to do? Yes, yes, very much so. Will you do it? Yes, I'd be very, very happy to. You want to set a date? <laughs> that would be up to, to Reverend Cook, but I don't want a media show. I think it's time that this thing get out of the media and back into the church where it belongs. No, 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 I, I, I can't imagine that they would invite cameras in, uh, and I'm sure that this kind of thing can be arranged privately, uh, possibly even at a, at a secret location. But if they were willing to do that, you are now publicly expressing yes. your willingness yes. Yes, and Tammy and I have... To, to do what? I just want to be clear. Tammy, I and I wa Tammy and I are willing to do whatever it takes to clear our name, whether it be in a court of law or, or person to person. We'd like to begin to talk to uh, perhaps some of the staff that would like to talk, or if, if not, that's up to them. I'm not forcing. I'm a, if I just hint something, I'm afraid I'll, I'll make a major headline or something tonight, so I'm a little hesitant. But we're willing to sit down with... Uh, the leaders of PTL, the staff of PTL, uh, our denominational people, and uh, we want to do that. And we're not afraid to do that. In fact, uh, we're more than willing now to go into a court of law because we feel that perhaps that's the only way that under oath that we can be able to clear our names. Well, what, I mean, if you're willing to go into a court of law, and again, I remind you, the last time you were on this broadcast, you said, you know, Jim Baker's not the kind of guy to sue. So I, I can't imagine you going into a court of law on the basis of a suit that you're going to bring against any of these people unless you've changed your mind, have you? Yes, we have changed our mind. You would sue? Yes, we are, we have, our attorneys are preparing a lawsuit at this time uh, against Mr. Roy Grutman against Mr. Grutman. Now, Mr. Yes. Mr. Grutman, uh, you know, while he writes and speaks very colorfully, uh, is a skilled attorney and therefore has That's been right. very, very careful about not saying anything for which he could be sued. There are a lot of people who apparently well, have accused you directly uh, of, of homosexual activity and, of course, there is the, the Jessica Hahn affair, which is a separate issue. Are you going to sue any of them? Our attorneys at this time are considering lawsuits against uh, those two individuals, yes. And we're also uh, definitely going ahead with a lawsuit uh, on the illegal takeover of PTL by Mr. Grutman, who represented us as our attorney and, and the, all the time he was orchestrating how he was going to help Mr. Falwell literally steal PTL from us. And also, we understand that the PTL, uh, a group of PTL partners uh, are instigating a lawsuit at this time against Mr. Falwell, a RICO action uh, for the illegal takeover of PTL. What is, what is RICO? It's a racketeering conspiracy. Now, why, are you, I, I just, uh, one quick question, then we'll take a break, uh, a break, and if we need to, we'll come back to the subject. But why are you suing Roy Grutman and not, uh, not suing... Uh, Jerry Falwell. I mean, you almost make it sound as well, if Jerry Falwell was Roy Grutman's cat's paw. Well, I just, I hate to get in a situation with a uh, minister, suing minister. I just, I feel very sad about it. I feel sad that, you know, the Bible said, ye without sin cast the first stone. Uh, I don't want to cast the second stone, but I feel that something must be done to clear our name and to clear this unbelievable campaign of uh, that was launched from a political base, I believe, a, a, a propaganda machinery of, of Mr. Falwell. Like, I don't think this country's ever seen anything like this before. I, it's the most hideous onslaught that's ever been put upon the American people. And I think we have to clear our name. Uh, we, we wanted to sit back and be peacemakers. You know, the Bible says the battle is the Lord's, and we've tried to sit back and let God do it. And I think we saw that when, when uh, Mr. Falwell and his troops all marched out together. I don't think he even knew what he was doing. I think God instigated that situation. And, and in the Jessica Hahn situation, 
I haven't had to raise my finger to, uh, or my words or anything to discredit her. I, I feel sad about it. I feel sad about what's happened there. But uh, she has hurt herself. And uh, I believe that uh, uh, ye without sin, as I said, cast the first stone. I don't want to cast these stones. I've been forced in a position where now uh, Tammy and I are forced to defend uh, our reputation and our name and uh, to, to back the, the support. You know, we had uh, thousands of people, really hundreds of thousands of people who put faith in the words we preached and the words we spoke. And I think I owe it to them to clear our name uh, in whatever, it, it, wherever it takes, or whatever court, or whatever situation. And I'm interested in facts. All right. So I'm am I, tired so, of hearsay. So am I. You know. and, and let's take a break, and then we'll come back to some facts. All right, back with Jim Baker in a moment. You're on your way. Kids and science can really get together in the right kind of place. So Dow has developed and funded the Touch Tech Laboratory here at Impression 5 in Lansing, Michigan. In this particular experiment, we're going to make a solid out of two liquids. It's a hands-on museum that puts the wonders of science at a child's fingertips. You know, PJ? And who knows what that could lead to. Dow lets you do great things. New Caffrey toothpaste decaffeinates your smile. Coffee and tea can stain your smile like they stain your cup. Caffrey decaffeinates your smile. Coffee and tea stains can be a problem for more people than tobacco stains. And who needs that? New Caffrey toothpaste with fluoride has three separate ingredients to get out coffee and tea stains better than the leading toothpaste. I'm not about to give up tea. And I won't give up coffee. Then try new Caffrey toothpaste. Caffrey decaffeinates your smile every day. Toothpaste or gel. Today in Music History, brought to you by Lemon Fresh Joy. Joy gets dishes so clean, they shine. Daddy, the dishes! Okay, Mom! Now, or unglue them later! Okay, Mom! Theodore, in this lifetime! And get them so clean, they shine! Shine? With this gunk? Joy's the name and shine's the game! Ready, Teddy? But this is dried egg. Teddy Joy attacks even dried on egg and cleans all the way to the shine. The gum's gone. And catch that shine. What a lemon lie. <laughs> lemon Fresh Joy gets dishes so clean, they shine. I remember thinking, do this or leave him. So you called Parkside. Did you know you were an alcoholic and needed help? If I did, I wouldn't admit it. Now I know I have an illness, and that's a big step for me. Then Parkside has helped. They understand my problem, and they're helping me solve it. Am I happy she called? I might have lost her if she hadn't. The healing begins the moment you call Parkside. We're back once again with Jim Baker. Mr. Baker, you spoke before the yeah. break with, with great passion, first of all, about uh, the American public having been uh, inundated with all of this. And, and uh, A, I'm not sure that the American public feels the need to be defended from it. I, I guess they see you more as having been inundated than the public. But also, you invoked the name of God, as you so often do, and said uh, that until now, you've really been in good hands just leaving it with God. And yet you seem to be giving a good deal of the business now to Melvin Belli rather than God. Why is it necessary then to bring these lawyers into it? Well, I, I think, Ted, because of the, the, the grand jury situation, the, the bankruptcy brought it into a court situation, we were brought into legal situations. And uh, I didn't ask for that, but I feel that we must be prepared and I feel we must go forward and, uh, you know, defend the truth now. Yeah, but you're talking about suing other people now. You're not just talking about defending yourself. You're talking about bringing suit against people who you say uh, have maligned your reputation. Uh, I mean, as far as uh, the, the money part of it and, uh, and some of these charges against you are concerned, that's the federal government. That's the IRS that's bringing, uh, that's investigating whether or not to bring suit against you, right? Uh, do you have any other suggestions of how I could clear my name? 
Well, I mean, you know, one way to clear your name would be to uh, take these things head on. Uh, you, you know, you always strike these glancing blows at it. You seem to be saying that, yes, you'd be prepared to meet your accusers and in front of the, uh, the governing body of the Assemblies of God, but, uh, uh, you know, you're real slick, and I, I didn't pin you down to that, and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, maybe you want to pin yourself down now. You will? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, of course. And a, I, a, want, I want the people to know that I've repented of my sins and I, I keep hearing this like we don't believe Jim and Tammy repented and I made a mistake a terrible mistake well you've heard what Jessica and look I mean you 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 raised Jessica Hahn's name a few moments ago and you said that uh, again the Almighty is kind of taking care of her uh, and yet what she has said I mean at the bottom of it all once you get past the really prurient stuff at the bottom of it all she says, you know, she never would have done any of this. And maybe, maybe she's telling you the truth, maybe she's not, I don't know. But she says she never would have done any of this if you had only been a gentleman, if you had only picked up the phone and said to her, Jessica, I really apologize for what happened. You never did that. Why? I did, a, I did apologize. To I her, apologize. directly? Yes, yes. When? At, w that weekend. Uh, a few hours, a uh, day after, we, I talked to her on the telephone. Uh, I told her that I had repented, it was terribly wrong, uh, that I could never see her again, and that I'd hoped that she would get it right with God, and uh, I asked her forgiveness, and, and I've not talked to her since, but uh, we had uh, repented, and um, Tammy and I put our marriage back together. Our marriage had fallen apart, and, uh, you know, I'm deeply in love with my wife. We have put our marriage together. We have, we have worked hard at that, and to... to uh, you know, to run through all of this over and over again has been very devastating to us. But Tammy and I have stayed together through this all. It's been very difficult for Tammy Faye through these times, through these last few weeks, as you can well imagine. And uh, God's strength and, and help has been with us. I cannot understand, uh, unless, of course, you're accusing Jessica Hunt of lying, um, that she would say again and again and again, as she has, and she said it to me personally, I've spoken to her on the phone, mm -hmm. that if only you had apologized, if only you had said you were sorry for what had happened, none of the I rest did. of this would have happened. I did, and, and I say it again, I'm so sorry for my sins, and I know God has forgiven me, and I hope the American people will forgive me for what I did wrong. What about Jessica and Hahn? You hope she forgives you? I hope all people forgive me. Yeah, but, you know, again, you you know, forgive me, you're just making it so general. I understand. I, you know, the most important thing to all of us is God's forgiveness, but I, I rather suspect uh, that the Almighty feels that unless you're, you're capable of seeking the forgiveness of the person that you have wronged, that going directly to him is kind of bypassing something. Yes. Well, I, I truly want forgiveness from everyone, I, and I mean that sincerely. Yeah, well, it's still kind of general, isn't it? I mean, do you have such a hard time saying it that you want forgiveness from her? Oh, of course I want forgiveness from her. I want forgiveness from everyone. And uh, I, I don't want to, to sling mud, but Jessica Hahn simply is not telling the truth, and I don't think I need to, to belabor that. I really don't. Well, I mean, you know, you say you want to set the record straight. I don't know how you're going to set the record straight without belaboring some of these things and, and substituting your truth for what you say is a lie. Well, I think uh, perhaps in our book we will deal with this subject, but uh, I feel, as I said before, I think it's very ungentlemanly to discuss these things and on, on public television. I, I, I feel like uh, it's been discussed enough, and uh, I, I feel very sorry for it. Very, very sorry. And I, I, you, I, you've, you've kind of lost me there, Lewis Baker. It's, it's ungentlemanly dis to discuss it on television, but if folks will wait for your book, then you're going to discuss no, it. No, because you can sit down and, and you, can, you can very carefully make the words. I, I don't, I don't want to hurt anyone. I don't want anyone being hurt anymore. Okay. Let's take a break. We'll be back in just a moment. GE is a family of many different kinds of people, and while it may not look like it, they all have the same job, bringing good things to life. We are the spark in the engine, the switch in the night, a voice in the dark from a million miles away. We are the beat. Sound of surprise and the wind. 
I went to my dentist with the worst pain. He told me about a different medicine. It's in these little yellow pills. Nuprin. Works so well on that pain, no wonder it's great on my awful headaches. Nuprin. It's not aspirin, not Tylenol. It's ibuprofen. So effective, two Nuprin stop headaches better than extra strength Tylenol. And Nuprin's gentler on my stomach than aspirin. Nuprin. Little, yellow, different, better. It even worked on my worst pain. Health Break, presented by Certs. There's a pure and simple way of moisturizing your skin from the inside out. Stay tuned. Certs knows everybody has a style of their own. So the next time you're out to say something about yourself, remember this. And so does the great taste of Certs with Retson. When the burning, itching, and soreness of hemorrhoids flare up, Tox medicated pads give you soothing, cooling relief on contact. For hemorrhoid flare-up, get Tox from Park Davis. Skin cells depend on water to function, and much like a neglected houseplant, they can wilt without it. Dermatologists recommend drinking at least six glasses of water a day. Watering your skin from the inside is a great way to keep it fresh and moist on the outside. I'm Jim Palmer for Healthbreak. And we are back live once again with Jim Baker. Mr. Baker, what do you care about most, the money or the religion? I care about people, hurting people, and giving them hope that Jesus Christ is the light of the world, that there's a hope for them today. You know, this world seemingly right now is falling apart. The stock market has fallen. People are, are killing people. And I want to tell them that there is hope, and God forgives. There's, there's, there's forgiveness. And if, if I can't receive forgiveness, and I can't teach forgiveness and repentance to other people, but God has been with us through all of this. He has restored us. He is restoring us on a daily basis. And I want to tell the world that Jesus Christ loves them and that there's hope for them. Let me, uh, let, I, me, let, me, let, me let me, if I may, let me, if I may interrupt for just a moment, because I don't doubt for a moment that, that uh, you know, God is capable of forgiving anyone, and I don't doubt for a moment that you feel you have received forgiveness, and that is wonderful. I hope you and your wife can live in tranquility for the rest of your lives. But the question is, uh, why does Jim Baker have to inflict himself on the American public? Why is it necessary for you to maintain... I mean, what kind of a role model do you think you are? Well, I hope I haven't inflicted myself on the American people. And the only role model I hope I could be is a sinner saved by grace and that there's hope for me and there's hope for everyone else. That's that, fine. That's... But, I mean, why, why should you be preaching anything? Why should you be a, why should you be restored as a minister? Uh, are you asking that as a prejudgment that you don't think I should be? I'm asking that uh, with, with certainly a healthy dose of cynicism. I'm saying here is a man who, who certainly mismanaged funds. Uh, I mean, you, you acknowledged as uh, much when you were on this program the last time. I'm not saying illegally, necessarily, and that's for someone else to judge, but you acknowledge that you're not a good money manager, right? I don't, I, I did not misuse funds, and that's why I'm anxious for a court to be able to document this. I think you heard uh, the representative of the bankruptcy court make that statement. There is no money missing at PTL. This was a hoax perpetrated by Jerry Falwell, the $92 million missing and all these other things. It's just simply not so. I'm not, invoking, I'm not invoking Jerry Falwell's name. If he wants to yeah. come on, uh, you know, he can do that for himself. What I'm, I'm invoking your name. I'm invoking what yeah. you told me the last yeah. time you were on this program. I'm invoking what your wife told me the last time she was on this program. You weren't willing to own up to a whole lot, but you were willing to own up to the fact that you weren't good money managers. We've always had help managing our funds. Our books have been open. I've had the best audit firms in the country uh, auditing our books. Uh, I think when the people see the truth and see what's inside of PTL, and I'm excited that we are able to document this and able to open it up. The books have always been open. And I believe that when the people see the truth, they'll realize that uh, Jim and Tammy did not mismanage and did not take money illegally from PTL. Okay, once again, we've got to take another break. I, I remind you, this wasn't anyone else saying it about you. This was you saying it about you. But we'll come back in just a moment. We'll be back. 
ABC's Olympic Diary is brought to you by Dodge Cars. Speed skating became an official Olympic event for women in 1960. However, in 1932, it was held as a demonstration sport. The 500 meters was won by Canadian Jean Wilson. And how did she feel about it afterwards? I'm awfully glad I won. It was a super race. If you're looking for the only sports car in the world that gives you the superior traction of front-wheel drive, a competition suspension, and an unbeatable 770 protection plan, then look no further. It's got to be the intercooled, turbocharged Dodge Daytona Shelby Z. It's got to be, it's got to be a Dodge. With five gold medals, Lydia Skoblakova of the Soviet Union has the most speed skating medals for women. Which cold medicine do pharmacists recommend most for 12 hours of relief? The answer to that remains up in the air. Drixoral, the pharmacist's favorite. You know what I did? I tried to punch out a phone at the airport. Well, my plane was late, so I wanted to leave a message at the office. 25 rings later, I get some guy in the lobby who tries to transfer me. Silence. Then click, Hello? and I know I'm cut off. From now on, we're going to go with a system we can trust. We get paid for our brains. We can't afford a phone system that makes it look like we haven't got any. Nutrific blends the goodness of wheat, corn, barley, and oat brands. It's nutritious. In dark, hearty flakes. It's terrific. With almond-covered raisins and almond slivers. It's nutritious. Nutritious. It's full brand new. My dandruff shampoo is good. Better try something else. Mine really works. You'd better try something else. Like Selsun Blue. Doctors recommend it more than all of the leading brands. None get rid of dandruff better than Selsun Blue. Today in Music History, brought to you by Duracell, the copper top battery. No battery lasts longer. Yesterday's copper top battery would need more than a wing and a prayer to keep up with today's Duracell battery. Because today's is so much better, it'll last up to 30% longer than the one we made just three years ago. Which means that yesterday's battery now falls a bit short. Today's Duracell. Last 30% longer. We're back once again with Jim Baker, uh, literally down to our last minute and a half. I want to come back to a question I asked you before, and what I had in mind was uh, what seems to have been a life, uh, at least over the last 10 years or so, of self-promotion and self-indulgence. And I ask you again, what kind of a role model do you think you've been? Well, as I said before, I hope and pray that I will be a role model of the forgiving grace of Jesus Christ and a person who believes in faith and believes that he can follow the vision and dream that God gives and sees it fulfilled. And I have more hope today for PTL and Heritage USA, whether we're there or not. They've appointed a new trustee, a Mr. Dave Clark, uh, who, uh, you know, I feel is a good man. I, I, I feel like... Uh, the uh, court now has a new uh, agenda before it from the creditors, and, and if the creditors just, are I'm, satisfied... I'm, I'm, I'm just afraid we're going to run out of time. If, if you get the chance to go back, if you get the chance to take it all over again, the answer is you're going back, right? If the partners want us, the people want us, and the creditors want us, then we're willing to go back. If they don't, we want to satisfy them. If they don't want us back, then Tammy and I will do whatever we feel led that God would have us to do All in right. the future. Jim Baker, I thank you. You certainly were as good as your word. You answered every question uh, in your own fashion, but I thank you for being here tonight. <laughs> Thanks a thank lot. Thank you. That's our report for tonight. I'm Ted Koppel in Washington. For all of us here at ABC News, good night. This has been Nightline. Nightline is a presentation of ABC News. <laughs> The first
free press. Thomas Jefferson called it the road to peace and liberty. Today...